and you already got some. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into the DIN unit. Um, so this is the basic web interface. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have R RTUs deployed that are the microchip platform, um, or maybe have like the NetGuardian G5s, G4s. Um, but this is the a little bit different interface, uh, a little bit more modern. So this would be just the alarm section. Uh, this specific unit has six alarms. We started using asynchronous. I mean, it's get data in and out of the RTU, so you're not always refreshing your web page, but quite so much faster. Yeah, so the whole page, the whole source loads as you load the page, and then we do queries in the background to, to constantly refresh and update the pages. Um, so these would be the uh, controls. So we can send a, a control remotely. So this is a momentary command. Just a normal analogs page. Uh, so for the analogs, we can view uh, input on a normal table interface, or we can have this gauge view. We, we have a few different gauge options. I'll, I'll show you those as we get through the edit section. Oh, so one quick question on that momentary. Is that adjustable? Or is it a yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of go oh, over that, but you have a, a, a time okay, duration for that momentary, that. yeah. Is momentary bidirectional, so if it's latched and you're momentary, does it release and latch again? Yeah, well, it depends on either the jumper, if it's a form form A, or the wiring, if it's form C. So it'll be normally normally open or normally closed, depending on how it's set up. And then, obviously, it'll switch states on that momentary. So this is the sensors interface. Um, this particular unit has up to 32 sensors that it supports. This would be the onboard temp sensor that it's, it's onboard the actual PCB. So the DIN also supports up to 30, 32 ping targets. You can also assign notifications for those alarms coming in. Uh, one of the newest features on the DIN unit is gonna be uh, Modbus interrogation. Um, we don't have anything that it's pulling right now, but it can support up to uh, 64 different Modbus registers um, specifically uh, function or um, uh, analog polling. So I'll kind of go over that. This is just the monitor interface. So I'll kind of go over how you would database that on the edit side. Again, the system alarms, just housekeeping alarms, um, internal alarms. So those can be silenced if, if we, we aren't interested in that. Uh, this is a graphing function. I don't think we have any enough data to really graph we'll kind of go over something real quick. And this just takes analog data, so you can see a analog uh, inputs one through eight, or we can we can pull all the sensor data. So the it only has 16 sensors, because we can only hook up 16. The extra 16 would be a special scripting language that is used to monitor different discrete inputs. So you can use a scripting language to monitor the amount of times like discrete alarm one is coming in. Um, so that would be the the remaining 32 sensor uh, index points valve possibly I, I don't recall exactly but we'll kind of just keep moving on um, this is just some some basic info on the unit so maybe you have some issue on any of you call us in we need to look at you know what hardware is configured on the unit um, this particular unit has a modem on it so that would kind of be presented in here so this is mainly for our purposes for debugging and troubleshooting. This would be the edit interface, so we could database the uh, different location name, DCP protocol, you guys are probably familiar with that, or we can pull it from Tmon. Um, you can get a history of the analog readings and sensor values. And this would be a trip unit ID, so that's a notification where it'll dial out to Tmon and and send uh, send the alarms that way. So I did do some development with a client that has a remote DIN unit, and they have no internet access on the unit. So they have to dial in to get the TTY interface and monitor the whole system using the TTY interface. So that's one of the options that it, it does support. Uh, user profiles, so we can add a, a, a secondary profile with uh, access rights, limitations, 
So if we just want attack to monitor the pages, we could select everything else, or we can select only the monitors pages and they don't have access to do any changes on the config. So this would just be the normal uh, ethernet setup, IP, subnet gateway, DNS server, or if you need to uh, add a host name. Oh, one quick question there on the uh, user profile. Is that stored locally on the box or can it be centralized? Because if you had several units, you know what I mean? Uh, we only centralize through radius. Uh, so this would all be local, local. but we do do radius authentication. Uh, you can see here, this is the, all the configuration for that. So. Um, this unit will have two serial ports. So uh, the Modbus interrogation, that's over TCP or over um, Modbus 232 or 485. So if we set that up, we could set that up to pull correctly with the, a slave device. SNMP, we support version one, B2C, and version three. Uh, authentication, MD5, SHA, AES, and DES. Um, and that's that's used for uh, mainly uh, SNMP trap notifications on alarms, but we can also do uh, read and write requests and we can, we can man, uh, remotely latch and release controls with SNMP commands. So this would be the alarm configuration. So qualifiers on our alarm, alarm in, inputs and our discrete points. So has to be qualified for say 10 seconds before it actually posts as an alarm state. Um, this would be the message that gets sent in like an email notification, um, so it can be more specific regarding how to how to um, resolve the alarm that comes in. Uh, software reversing of the alarm point, depending on maybe we wire it up differently, and we can just reverse it in, in the configuration. Uh, all these uh, columns here are going to be the notifications. We'll kind of go over that real quick. So as I said before, we have uh, trip notifications, but we also have uh, email notifications, SNMP traps, and then alpha paging where you can actually send it uh, to a pager. So one of the things that uh, our clients are doing now is using the Gmail server to actually forward emails out. So you don't have to have your own SMTP server in house. Uh, normally you would, you would route it through the SMTP server but with the, the Gmail server being public, as long as you have a Gmail account, you can actually use that to send out all these emails for uh, the RTU config. So that would that'd be taken care of in here. You just set up your, your Gmail account, and you're good to go. So controls, as you asked before, uh, we have that user configurable duration for the momentary. Uh, it's a drive description. So what that does is, depending on the equation that we have, what this is saying is we want an or just dis, uh, display one point one, and if that's ever set in alarm state, we're going to latch that control. So depending on certain alarm conditions, you can expand that equation and you can control your control states based on incoming alarms. So maybe you have a generator out and you want to monitor a certain point and then uh, turn on a generator control. So it's kind of an automated process for you. So OR is like a, a logical command, logical operation. So you have OR, NOT, and AND that we support. So you can use those to create an equation based on the alarms you need to, to kind of monitor. So if you just want to follow one alarm point, you would just do an OR and then the display point. So this is our analog interface. This would be uh, plugging in directly into the unit. Um, so we have, this is the record frequency. Um, so that's kind of influencing the uh, graphing as well. So if we don't have anything set here, it's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna log any of the data. Dead band is just uh, for kind of like a qualifying point. So it gives us a, a, a cushion on that threshold before it actually posts an alarm. Uh, qual time is just, 
you know, it has to meet a certain time that it's in an alarm state before it actually posts within the unit. Um, we can scale the analog inputs. So we have different types of sensors, um, like, a, like a PSI sensor it outputs 4 to 20 milliamps, but it corresponds to 20 to 100 PSI. So we could, uh, we could change the scaling and the display unit so that way we're, we're monitoring it and we get email notifications. Um, some of our units have text notifications. You'll, whoever's monitoring those values is going to be able to get those as a, um, you know, in, in a, in a me meaningful way. It's not just going to be some current or some voltage. And these would just be the thresholds. So each analog channel um, has four thresholds that we can apply. So major under, minor under, uh, minor over, and major over. It would be that gauge selection that we kind of uh, demonstrated earlier. So we have a couple different options for for displaying those analog values. So this would be the sensors page. And I'll go ahead and add those sensors that we were looking at earlier. So it's kind of similar to the uh, to the analog page. Um, what we do is the auto detect type of sensor that's hooked up to the unit. Right, so I added the temp humidity and the zero to five in the sensor. And then so what I'll do is I'll hit the rediscover button. And that's basically going to pull the sensors that are on that leg. And so we see that we had a temperature sensor hooked up, a humidity sensor hooked up, and we have a zero to five volt sensor hooked up. So the good thing about the D-wire sensor is all of our uh, modern RTUs are going to be supporting all the, the wide variety of D-wire sensors, and they're all auto-detectable. So you can go ahead and plug them in. We do recommend you plug them in one at a time, especially if you're doing you know, multiple temperature sensors or multiple temp humidity sensors. You're not really going to know. You're going to have to run back and forth and verify the ROM ID, which is the unique identifier for each specific uh, unit. So by doing them one at a time, we know that we're, we're dealing with the correct sensor. So I'll just kind of database these real quick. you can kind of see the color coding. So as it detected those, but they weren't configured yet, it highlighted them as yellow. Um, as we're, they're good and configured, they're green. If they're configured, but we have an issue and they're not detected, then we highlight those ROM ID fills as red. So that would be the DWR interface after those are added. So pretty simple process to add those onto the unit. Uh, ping target interface, pretty basic. Uh, assign IP, and you can assign notifications. So Modbus um, implementation, uh, this is fairly new. Only a, a few clients that I know of are using it. Um, so we can we can date uh, interface with uh, 45, 232, depending on the build option of the unit. So we can pull over um, uh, 23245 or TCP. So kind of, so we have a slow connection. So we just add, this would be with the IP or the host name. Um, this would just be the TCP port and the mod this address. So if we're, it's really slow. So if we're using 485, it would be just dependent on which port is built on that unit. So for each register, we would we would add the the different values. So we want poll register fifteen hundred, and that's maybe a single register. So it's sixteen bits long, and it's an analog unsigned value, and we don't want to scale the the, the value that we get back. Um, and then this would just be for displaying that ultimate value that we get back from that modbus slave device. So mainly what we've been working with is uh, generator controllers, so with monitor um, industrial generators. 
um, you get status from those generators. This is just another example. So we have the threshold. So it's going to pull that pull that value, interpret it the value that we got from the slave device, and then post it like a normal analog value. So this would be the the system alarms. So like I said, we can silence these alarms. Um, maybe we know somebody's working on site, and or maybe we know that uh, one of the notifications is is down right now and needs to be monitored. So instead of removing that notification, we could just silence it for now. Timers, this is just some configuration. Uh, the amount of time that the, the web's automatically refreshing uh, is pretty similar to the G5, G4 interface. And then this would just be the, the uh, uh, time on the unit. So we support NTP um, and DST. Um, so backing up the config, uh, we can back up the config, transfer it to other units, uh, send it in if you think you have an issue with the unit, or we might request a config. Um, reading and writing. So reading is kind of like um, undoing all your changes. Writing is when you actually want to force your changes onto the unit. Initializing is setting it back to factor defaults. Um, get log and purge log. That would be related to the event log. So it has like a login information. Um, it's information specifically for the unit, not necessarily alarm alarm logging. And then obviously a reboot command just reboots the unit. Um, home just takes us back to the normal home page. Upload is where you want to upload all your uh, config files, or uh, if you want to upgrade the unit, you just do it through here. So it's all web based. So that's the basic DIN unit. So it's a small unit. You guys can take a look at it if you want. Uh, it's pretty robust for compact size. It's actually um, pretty inexpensive compared to you know, the other units that have a lot of these features on them. So 